Bonjour from France. This is another episode of Hiking with QS. And once again, I will be doing a very epic hike, seven days tour du Mont Blanc. One round that spans three countries, France, Italy, and Switzerland. And we'll be crossing different mountain passes. Follow me. I have reached Chamonix, France, finally. I'm currently walking through Chamonix, very touristy area over here. I'm gonna check out some of the spots shop. Uh, in particular, the Catalan at the foot of Mont Blanc. It looks like they have a wider variety of uh, products here. But of course, the price here is more expensive. This is the official starting point of the Tour du Mont Blanc and we are right here at Le Zouche. Tomorrow, I will be embarking on my hike and I will be starting from the Bellevue cable car. And this is my hotel for the night. This is the first night at Rocky Park. Bonjour, day one of Tour du Mont Blanc. I leave my hotel, Rocky Park, at about 7. And right now, I will make my way to take the bus to the Bellevue cable car station. And that will enable me to be able to do the variant on the first day. So I'm gonna wait for the bus right now. I just met a group of Korean hikers. They're very cute. They can't speak English, but they still try to communicate with me. Very friendly people. But it's not open yet. I think it's open at 8 a.m. So we're gonna wait for a little bit. Cable car right now. Lots of fellow hikers. I reached the top of the cable car station right now at Bellevue, and I'm going towards uh, Col du Trico. I heard there's a lot of ice, so I'm gonna find out if it's safe to do without spikes. I didn't bring any spikes today, so let's go. It says that we are two hours away from Col du Trico. And then Chalet de Miach that I'm planning to have lunch at is 3 hours 10 minutes away. Let's see how accurate it is and how fast we have to actually walk. We are right now at the infamous bridge and the water runs very fast. I think a lot of ice is melting on top. So I'm gonna cross the bridge. If you're afraid of heights, it might be a challenge, but it was fun. The ascent up after the bridge is pretty challenging. It takes some stamina to be able to go up, but after a short 20 minutes, we will come to a clearing. Oh, the Trico is still somewhere up ahead. I think I'm still an hour, less than an hour to that mountain pass. Whew. The climb up to Oh, the Trico is just basically an ascent after ascent after ascent. And right now, I think I have the mountain pass in vision. I've reached Paul the Trico. This is the first variant if you are doing Tour du Mont Blanc from Le Zouche. So right beside me is Mont Vorsey. So I'm gonna take a breakfast here. So the way down is a winding path down. Not very steep, but just be careful of the rocks. We are at Refuge de Miage. 10.45 right now. I think I reached a little bit earlier than expected. Under three hours, that's a good sign. So there's a beautiful glacier right behind me. You can see. And over here, there's a free water, free toilets, and even a kitchen if you are hungry. I am currently near Montrock. I'm heading towards Le Troc and should be going down to Lake Contamine. It started drizzling a little bit. The sand from Refuge de Miach over here, it's a very steep 20 minutes of a climb. So I'm taking a little break before I continue. Check out my friend here, Alex. How you doing? He's camping on a Tour de Mont Blanc. A free man to choose where he wants to camp. And right now, both of us are headed towards Lake Contamine. Uh, it says one hour down, so we shall see. 
we have reached Le Contamine. I think it's very quiet today in general. It's the fringe of the season. It's in late June. There will be a lot more people in July and August. The weather has been pretty okay. It's almost like it's gonna rain but it didn't. It just drizzled. A good cooling weather for us. All I can think of is lunch at Le Contamine. Let's go. It feels eerily quiet as if no one is here. So I don't know if that's good or bad but yeah, we're just going towards the center right now. This is lunch at Le Contamine. They have a three-course meal here for 20 euros. And this is the salad. I think we still have about four hours to go later. So we need all the energy we can. <laughs> I'm on the way to refuge Namboron and then on to refuge de La Balma. And the way from Le Contamine here, one quarter of it is pretty flat like walking in a park feels pretty good after you pass Camping Le Ponti when you see the Notre Dame that's where this crazy ascent happens the weather has been changing from bright to drizzle to bright so it's very unpredictable you need both sun protection and rain protection here right now I have reached Refuge Namboran about 3 p.m. A very good timing. They serve lunch here and this is one of the hardest to book refuge I tried booking it half a year ago didn't work I'm gonna head one more refuge down to Balmer. I have finally reached refuge de la Balmer. My stay for the night. This is my first night for the Tour du Mont Blanc. I've reached here about 4 p.m. The weather here is very sunny. Um, it was predicted thunderstorm, but all the clouds just went away. So right now I'm inside of uh, refuge de la Balmer. This is how the bed looks like. Left my boots and poles outside. Right now, we need to take a shower because it closed after dinner. When you come to the refuge, make sure you bring your own sleeping liner. It's important, if not, you'll have to buy one. Behind me is the toilets, bathroom. Uh, this is where you shower. And of course, there's some free water from the drinking tap here. And you basically do your laundry over here. We are given names on our table and we have to find our table and I'll be sharing with three other people for my dinner. Here the sign says that it takes 6 hours 55 minutes to reach Refuge in Dumote. I'm going to go a little bit further than that so I think it will take me 7-8 hours to reach Refugio Elisabetta. I'm going to see if I can do the Cold Default variant. If not, I'm going to go down to Le Chepieu. I've just climbed the first ascent. It's about 15 minutes to 20 minutes. And look at the amazing view right behind me and there's a stream and I think there's a lake called Lac Jovet at the back uh, there's a variant which I'm not going but I'm going to head over the pass it looks like there might be some snow over here we have a little stream crossing nothing too difficult and then there's some patches of snow up ahead I'm standing on the snow right now there's a lot of hikers along the way, so to walk through the snow is not too difficult. Feels amazing! I'm currently at the top of the mountain pass, Kodu Bonhume. Lots of patches of snow here, uh, but not too difficult. You can do it without spikes. I'm not sure about Cody 4, which is up there. You can see still lots of snow. We're gonna take a little break before we continue. Proceed with caution because there's a lot of snow all the way to refuge Bohoma. Am I already in Italy? There are some people passing by and they say ciao. So I think I'm already in Italy. On my last bit to the Bonhomme Refuge. It's super windy and cold. I'm reaching soon. I am at Col de Four. 
I made the decision to come up despite all the snow. The snow here is very firm so it's still quite safe coming up. It took about 30 minutes from the sign back there. And you can see it's all snow around me. But once you hit the coal, you can see a beautiful view of the mountains behind. You can see all around is a amazing view. This is the coal default variant. I'm gonna try to bring my way way down. I've cold before coming down. It's full of snow, it's still quite dangerous. So if you don't have crampons with you, I did it very slowly. There were some crossings that you have to be really careful, you have to find the right way. If not, you might fall into the waterfall. This is uh, Ling uh, she's from Netherlands, and they both went crazy and went up cold before when there's so much snow. But we survived. We are, Look at the view. yes, a water with amazing views all around. But we are hungry, so we need to go to a refuge very soon. Right now, I am at refuge Le Mote, and this is a very hard to book refuge. Thanks to my new friend, Ling, she treated me to a Coke. This is uh, the restaurant. I've ordered some pasta. I think I have another three hours to Elizabetta. I hope I can get there on time for a shower and dinner. And now I have to climb again to Elizabetta. Let's go. Throughout the TMB, get ready to cross one of these waterfalls. Looks like a rabbit, but at the same time, it looks like a raccoon. I have reached Cold de la Cine. It's a gruesome 645 meters ascent. I'm glad I made it after lunch. It says another 50 minutes to Refugio Elizabetta. That's where I'm staying on the second night. There's still quite a lot of snow. But it's doable without spikes. Just be careful. We have an awesome snowy mountain landscape right around me. I am right now outside La Casameta. Maybe it's just a information hut. I think I'm about 30 minutes away from where I'm gonna stay. The downhill is pretty fun. Not so much ice. I'm half running it a little bit because the conditions are good. I have just arrived. Refugio Elizabetta right behind me. Also seen some Chinese girls. Apparently they know my channel. So thank you for knowing my channel. I feel great when this happens. It motivates me to do more content. And I can't wait to shower. It's already near 5 p.m. I think it's 4.45. I'm gonna get the dinner, of course, and then get my 9 hours of sleep. Let's have a look around Refugio Elizabetta. This is my room. Yeah, you can find your toilets. So that's the kitchen over there. And this is the room to put all the poles and shoes. And there's also a separate room outside to put your shoes and the poles. The outside area, the laundry. And of course, you can see the mountains behind us. It's been an amazing day two of the Tour du Mont Blanc. Good morning from Refugio Elisabetta. I had my breakfast and I'm ready to go towards Refugio Bertone. Weather is pretty good, amazing view. 
and I have a little bit of an ascent and then a lot of descent today so we'll be descending into Kumoyo so I'll see you there there are still interesting chunks of ice still melting on the roadside it is interesting to know that there are a lot of rocks here and this used to be used by the Romans the troops used to roam this part of Italy We are currently at Cabendu Combo, which you can see right in front of me. It's a pretty nice refuge as well on the Italy side. It's a very tiring ascent. 500 meters up, I'm still probably less than halfway. And behind me, you can see the actual lake of Combo. And here, I have to ascend some more. But let us just take a good view of the mountains before we continue. After having a little break looking at the amazing glaciers, we descend a little bit into the valley. And there's a little bit of ice here, but nothing too difficult. I think there's also a stream crossing over there. Seems like there's a cable car over here. I'm hoping to take the gondola or the chairlift just for the experience. I think the cable car up there is operating but it's off the trial. So I'm gonna go lower and see if there's any luck. This is Refugio Meisenville. It sits right next to all the gondola and cable car. So if you are gonna get a drink, it's a good time. Sounds about 9.40. I'm gonna go straight ahead. So the chairlift is officially still closed in the late June. You can only take it in July if I'm not wrong. So we're gonna head down, maybe a half an hour descent. And over here, we pass by Rifugio Rodondonia. So the last section of the trial to Komaya is a forest path. I think this is the last 15 minutes before I reach Komaya. I just realized I have dropped my little towel and my raincoat as well. They are all at the outside of my bag. I didn't know maybe the rope snap or something. Uh, it started drizzling a little bit, so I will need to shop for a raincoat. I've arrived, Tolon. Uh, I think it's just next to Komaya. Komaya is a proper town that you can buy groceries, shopping, hotels, everything. There's a church, it's 12 p.m. I'm gonna look for my restaurant, grab a lunch, and I'll be on my way to the final destination, Ifuju Bertoven. So for lunch, I settled down in the restaurant. It's called La Padilla. And I like to order things that I don't know, so I've ordered a Papadel. Yeah, I have no idea what's that. So we're gonna check it out. I'm kind of shocked because all the shops in Italy, in Comeo, are actually closed between 1 and 3.30 p.m. All supermarkets, shops, except for restaurants. So I can't get my raincoat here. I can't visit the supermarket. If not, I have to wait till 3.30. That might be a bit too late for me to get up to Refugio Baton. I would like to do some laundry today. I've been ascending by the road all the way to this car park and it says 1 hour 30 minutes away from the refugio. Over here we have an outlook point. It's just a miracle how one and a half, two hours of hiking can actually bring you so high. Really tiring, it's an endless, endless winding road all the way up. I can't wait for the shower. This is Refugio Bertone. And this is the living quarters. Let me show you where I'm gonna stay. Um, before that, there's a toilet over here. You can see that this toilet has a shower as well. The hot water is always a tricky thing because they use coins. I'm gonna try making it work. Or I can shower very early before the water gets too cold. And this is my living quarters. Uh, you can see it's a double bum bit. It's 
So I paid a little bit more just to have this comfort of not sleeping with 20 other people. So it's just me and one other person. The person is not here yet. Okay, we have a little view over here, a little mountain. Good morning from Refugio Beton. Today I'm in a hurry and I have to race all the way to La Folie for the bus. So I just had my breakfast and ready to go. I would say this Refugio has the best toilets and facilities. So right now I have to do a quick ascent to the Grand Cole Ferry. It looks like we have a cow here, lots of cows grazing just right in front of me. There's a bridge, which means we are very near Refugio Walter Bonatti. Let's go! I have reached Refugio Walter Bonatti. I think it's one of the highest rated refuge in the TMB. I'm not staying here. Unfortunately, it's very hard to book this place. You have to book six to seven months ahead. I'm gonna go up towards Grand Pole Ferry. We've got some horses here. I've reached Chalet Vale Ferry. We have to take a little turn here before we can climb all the way up to Paul Grand Ferry. It's gonna be a very, very long climb. The sign says we are five hours, 10 minutes away from La Folie. It's about 10, 15 over here. I have a packed lunch today. It has a sandwich, a chocolate bar, biscuits, and a fruit. If you guys want to know what a steep ascent means, this is the Alpine Steep Ascent. It's about 30 to 40 degrees. And you have to basically use your poles well to make sure you don't injure your legs. And we are going up. You'll see that there's still quite a bit of ice at some of the parts of this Val Ferry. I have reached Refugio Elena. They have no website, no email. You have to call to book a place here. So anyway, we are just passing this place. Just got to call Grand Ferry. It's right behind me with the crowd. It's been raining a lot, so I can't do much video. There's still quite a lot of ice behind me, but I have no time to lose. I need to hit to La Folie right now. It's super windy and cold here, and I lost my raincoat, so I have to survive this. I'm currently at the Gut de la Pue in Switzerland. Suddenly it rained really heavily, <laughs> so I'm just here to take a break, a lunch break. And lots of people in this little tent just escaping the rain a little bit. I hope the rain passes soon. The rain stopped after 15 minutes, so now it's about 1.15, 1 1.20. I'm gonna head towards La Folie to catch the 3.45 p.m. bus. We are at another waterfall bridge. There's an amazing number of rivers like this one with very strong currents passing through the Swiss landscape. Uh, about 40 minutes to La Folie. It's about 2 p.m. I decided to take this nature trail instead of the road. Yes, I have reached La Folie. I think it's before 2.30 so a uh, very good timing. The rain actually spurred me on a little bit because I was afraid to get wet. I'll be taking a bus later and today joining me we have Li Ying again. <laughs> <laughs> me again? Hi! She took a bus this morning to continue the trial and I just met a Hong Kong lady over there. So on the Tour de Mont Blanc you meet new people every day. That's a nice thing about staying in huts. People will start to know you. You can have a good time talking to them over dinner. This is my first supermarket purchase. Yeah, okay. We 
are currently in Osiris and apparently the same bus is going to go to Shanghai. Osiris is a little town in Switzerland. We have reached Shanghai and this is the last stop of Shanghai. I'm going to my final resting place for tonight, the Gitbon Ambri. It's 5 p.m. We're going to check in and rest for the night. place is actually a single area Just finished dinner. We meet some new people. <laughs> yes. Okay, so hopefully she will see this on the YouTube. Good morning. Today five of the TMB tour de Mont Blanc. I'm leaving Git Bon Abri right now. It's about 8.30 a.m. I'm doing a later start today. I'm going to Trien in Switzerland, Le Petit. I think it should only take about five to six hours to reach there. So I'm gonna take my time today. I hope the weather is good today. Hopefully no rain at all. And we are gonna traverse the beautiful forest of Switzerland. I have decided not to do the variant today. Penetra the Arctic. I think it's still a little bit dangerous because the ice has not melted and it also rained quite hard yesterday for the whole entire day so it's probably gonna be slippery so I'm sticking to the original Tour de Mont Blanc route and right now it's the forested area there's a little hut right here I think it's a refuge. So we are about to ascend. And here comes the steep ascend. just managed to cross a very long waterfall stream connection it's full of rocks that you have to hop from one to the other I think it's pretty impossible to not get wet because some of the rocks are too shallow so I'm thinking it as a boots washing area my boots are all clean right now luckily I have gated up my pants so there's not a whole lot of water that sit through into my socks even though it's a little bit wet, we're gonna have a sunny day today to dry our laundry at Trien. Looks like we have a lot of clouds here, it's all foggy up ahead. You never know what the weather will be like on the Tour de Mont Blanc and hopefully it doesn't rain. So throughout the Tour de Mont Blanc, there are little pen gates here that you have to open and remember to close so that the house doesn't come loose. We have reached the refuge Bovin. I think it's only 11. I'm gonna do a lunch break here and then continue. Morning lunch. And this is my lunch. So I've ordered a complete omelette. It has mushrooms and cheese. And I ordered a hot chocolate. Just met two Swiss ladies. They're very young and they're only doing two days, but they are doing not the TMB. So let's wish them good luck. <laughs> the view has cleared. It's uh, about 12.05. I just had my very early lunch here and heading towards my final destination for today. You can see that this area has a little bit of fencing. Uh, it's just a line because it's a very sharp drop. If you accidentally slip and fall, it could kill you. 
So just be careful over here. We are currently at the Cold de la Fortress. There's a little chocolate shop right behind me over here. Refuge La Puti, which is where I will spend the night today and I have a ride at 2.30, it's very early I think it's a good resting day for me So this is La Puti, living quarters See that the beds are all side by side and shared So I will be sleeping in the corner up there So it's a little bit hard to get up I have to navigate a lot of items but it will be an interesting experience. I met a friend here, he's from Paris. Hi. And he has eaten like three dishes if my soft plate is yes. <laughs> yeah, he's too good. Yeah, he's, I think he's filling his stomach like three times for three days and he's making it worth all the money. And he's camping. His friends left him alone. They so left me alone. <laughs> they left me alone because I'm too slow. That's what happens when you're weak. So anything you want to say to them? Don't be weak, be strong. <laughs> okay. Wish him best of luck for the rest of the trip. Day 6 of 7 of the Tour du Mont Blanc. I just had breakfast at Refuge Le Puti and this is one of the best refuges so far. The food is amazing. You have like 20 plus people sleeping together so that's quite an experience. So we're gonna head towards Col du Balm and then I'm gonna head all the way down to Trilicham. I'm doing two stages today so I have to rush. Let's go! Five minutes after the ascent, there's a fallen tree. So just be careful on your way to call the balm. We have reached refuge called the balm. Time now is about nine. There's a variant and traditional route. So I'm gonna do a bit of research before I go. I have decided to go on the trial with the Aguili de Posset. I'm not sure if it's, this is the official route or the variant but it feels like this route is gonna be more things to see if I head to the tour I will be down right down at the little town over there which I think I will be seeing quite a bit later on so let's head towards Aguili de Poussey the other side as well on to La Blanc if the weather permits the descent down has been mostly very safe a lot of wooden planks built as steps you don't have to worry too much about the rocky path I just met a lovely couple they are going around with this tape marking they are marking the whole route for everyone I have arrived at Auberge La Bourne, one of the refuge along the Tour de Mont Blanc and I think I will have a little bite over here before I carry on. Time now is 12.45, I've just completed my lunch. Let's do the La Blanc climb. It's about a thousand meters to ascend.
somewhere near Guli Liang Gantier. And this is the ladder section. I think it should be fine. I'm not sure if there are more up there. If you are afraid of heights, uh, the ladder might not be the, a good thing for you. You can see all the way down. So I'm just left with a small section upwards and we'll be good. There are also some bars that you have to step on the horizontal section of a rock. That one is uh, quite scary. When you thought you completed the ladder section, which actually took quite a while, I see one more section of ladder up there. Looks like there are a lot of ladders over here. And this gives you the full view of the Mont Blanc Massif. We are about 40 minutes to Lac Blanc. Let's go! You can see a very greenish blue color. The very clear water over here. The way to refuge Lac Blanc is still covered in snow. That's a pretty short section. I think it's pretty doable. Right behind me is Refuge Lac Blanc. It's still full of snow. As you can see, Lac Blanc. You can see the very bright blue color of the water on the ice. I'm on my way down to La Fleclier. You can see a crowd here. They're looking at an Ibex. I have reached the Fligier cable car station. This is a cable car that takes you back to Chamonix Le Pro. It's been a really tough day for me. It's almost 5. I think it's still 4.30 something. This is a huge delay. Let me show you. This is the main area. This looks like a dining area. Upstairs, these are the rooms. My room is over here. And that's where I'm sleeping. So it's time to rest. Day 6 accomplished. Good morning people to a beautiful sunrise over Mont Blanc. This is La Fligia and we are right above Chamonix and you can see that the sunrise is casting a light over the mountains this morning so I think it will be a great weather for my last day day 7 of the Tour du Mont Blanc Today, I will be heading towards the Zouche where I started I'm hoping that the Le Brevon snow is going to be okay in the morning so that it's not so dangerous. There are a lot of rocks here in this section. Just be careful when negotiating the rocks. This section from the Gier to Brevon has been a very narrow route. I think this is one of the most dangerous along the Tour du Mont Blanc. Steep down if you fall. So just be very careful. Over here you can see two roads. One going upwards and one going down. The one going up will lead us to the base just right before Brevon. So we're gonna take the high route. I am right now at the cable car station that takes you to Le Brevon. It's about 8.30 right now. Just enjoy the scenery for a little bit first. I'm going to have a look, if it's too dangerous, I'm just going to take the cable car. I'm not going to risk my life for this. I'm right now at Col du Brevon. It's full of ice here. I just saw a runner going up. He has no sticks and no spikes and he's doing pretty good. So I'm going to follow him. I've managed to work my way up to Aguili Rogue and I'm 45 minutes away from the Brevon. I think the snow can only be attempted in morning when the ice is still hard. It's pretty dangerous. I've successfully hiked up all the way to the Brevon. I think it is a 2500 meters point here. There's a cable car station. 
I saved myself 28 euros thanks to the French runner who guided me how to negotiate the snow safely. I'm gonna take a quick break before I go down to Lazouche to finish my Tour de Mont Blanc. The way down is full of big rocks like this. So it's easy to go down but just have to be careful to not step on the wrong rock. I'm gonna head towards a refuge and see whether there's lunch over there. I believe this is Lac du Brevin. It's a lake but it's still frozen. I reached the refuge, Belacher. I think I'm still kind of early, so I might want to go to Le Zouche for lunch. We are about one and a half hours more down. There's a fence here. I think this is an animal park. We are not allowed to hide here. I think I took the right way down to parking the Malu. Almost done, almost done. It looks like there are some pigs over there in the enclosure. So I think this is like a zoo or something like that. We have arrived somewhere near the Zouche and I found this very hidden refuge. It's called Tupilak. It's basically the first station if you do a clockwise from the Zouche. Okay. Ah, okay. The owner is going to show me the refuge. <laughs> So we're going to have a tour of the Tupilak. So this is uh, the eating quarters. We're going to go upstairs. Yeah, okay. The toilet. Wow, very spacious room. It's definitely a lot more spacious than the other refuge that I've been to. This is another room. Wow. A more private room. A double bed and a single. Okay, and a double bed here. And a couple of bits that are in the attic. We are gonna have our lunch, a salad, and my orange juice. So this is what the owner calls Crozy Flay. The owner has also proudly presented me with the batch of Tour de Mont Blanc and a fridge magnet. So if you are passing through and you're finishing your Tour de Mont Blanc, you should definitely have a lunch here at this refuge called Tupilac. I am almost there, finishing Tour de Mont Blanc. We are back in Le Zouche. I'm actually with a couple from Denmark. We've uh, been seeing each other for the last two days. And we all complete the Tour de Mont Blanc today. Yes, the end is right in front. It's a very emotional moment. Just seven days ago, I was here. Here, I am at the final destination, the sign that ends and begins it all. Yes, I have finished Tour de Mont Blanc. I have only skipped the La Folie to Champay section. Took a bus over there because it was raining so hard and it was a very long day. I have done maybe 160 plus kilometers. It's time to celebrate and have a good rest.